Hello and welcome to Project Design I.O. If you have access to the exercise file, please access this file indicated here. The link in the description below. So, what you're looking at here is real project. It's a work in progress, but advanced enough to be nearly ready to be published for approval. But there are some problems. So let's see what the problems are and try to resolve them. Yeah, let's just go. This is a seven floor office building. Not everything is perfectly drawn in here, like you know, graphically, the, the floors are not divided and so on. Some of the dividers are here, some of them are not, but let's not to worry about this. Let's just concentrate on the resolving the issues in here. Right, okay, let's just calculate and see what the problems we have. Looks like no problems. We have one note for information that the five core cable data is not available. Let's just double click, find that cable. What is the cable? 150 mil armored. Uh, may not be available in reality. Let's ignore that for now. Okay, before I create reports, I need to check selectivity study, otherwise I may miss problems. So run the selectivity study. There you go, we've got some problems. Selectivity limit on a device. Selectivity limit between the device and upstream is zero. Double click to find the device. What we're looking at here now, this is a distribution board, but distribution board used as a incomer. So we can have single cable fitting to distribution boards. What I'm talking about is standard Schneider incomer where you can have single supply, single isolator fitting to distribution boards in here. That's the same situation. To achieve this in ProDesign, you use distribution board as a two-way disk board, which feeds to distribution boards. That distribution board will have incomer, incomer protection, and at the moment is set as 160 amp, sorry, 125 amp trip, 160 amp frame Schneider device. What you will also see that this cable is also protected by the same device. That is a problem because you can't have discrimination sorry, selectivity, you can't achieve energy-based selectivity or even time current selectivity, you will not be able to achieve because you have two exactly the same devices in the upstream and at the incomer. What well, the problem here is in addition, those cables, I think they're also protected. No, they're not protected, so that's good. Because this is an isolator, the cables should be set as no protection. So if it has protection, you should untick that box and that should be set as has no protection. Now, to get rid of our problem here, we need to get rid of that protected device in the distribution board. What we're gonna do, we're gonna change this protection to isolating switch, because in reality, this is exactly what we're gonna have. Well, we can have a protected device, as you can see in here, but we're gonna have isolator, let's say 160 amp isolator, okay? If I want to have MCCB 160 amp, my upstream device would have to be minimum 250 amp frame, I would say. Ideally 400, but 250 should do it. But in my installation, this is not the case. I have 160 amp isolator. That's what I'm going to set. Now, if I do a selectivity study again, first the cable calculations are being performed. Now I've got more issues. Sometimes pro design works that way that you think everything is good until you change something and in other part of installation suddenly you've got problems. That's why you actually have to go through the selectivity study and make sure everything is good. Let's see what the problems we have. Time current discrimination and energy basic discrimination, just information, there is no manufactured data. I'm going to ignore this and concentrate on time current discrimination. Okay, bus bar number one, which is here. Okay, let's see what the problem is. Let me just go there. All right, that's the problem. And the tap off is a problem. I guess T5A, T6A, we may have a similar problem. 
Let's see. This board in camera protection. Yeah. It's not protected device. It's not 100 amp protected device because look, we've got 100 amp frame and 100 amp trip. And the cable also have protection, 160 amp frame and 125 amp protection. It's actually different manufacturer, the grand. So you will not be able to use the cascading in here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set this as an isolator because that's what it is in reality. In camera protection, isolating switch and I'll leave it as 125 amp. And in here, that's the same. In camera protection, switch, 125 amp. Let's run the calculations again. I've got one more problem, cable selection. Now, so because this cable is protected by 125 amp device, let's double check. Yes, 125 amp. And the cable is 50 mil. What I should really do by default, have the same size of cable as the protection. The, the rule is if you change the cable type or size, you have to have protected device at this point here. Unless the cable is not longer than three meters, then you can have the protection at the load end. So I could have the protection at the in camera. But bear in mind, this is the situation here, that there's just a single core, probably tri-rated cables within the switch gear. It may not be tri-rated cables, but single core cables. So ideally what you want to do for the purpose of calculations, you want to set these cables to the same size as the one to the in camera. So if I set that to 50 mil, same size, because there is isolator, no protection, correct. Basically what I'm saying is this cable is protected by device in this top off. Okay, now if I calculate, the problem has gone away. Now let's select selectivity study. I've got one more problem. The disconnection time of the upstream of a current protecting device in LV001A is lower than the circuit. Okay. So upstream protection, this device here is probably in camera, let's check, in camera not protected, yeah, okay. So this warning message says that this device here have problem with time current selectivity with that device there. The way to check, double click on the cable, go to protection, go to view graph, let's increase the size so you can see. Now I need to move those tags so I can see what's what. Okay, that's my top off, the, that's the red device, which is the upstream device. That's my green device. That's a move about. So you can obviously see that you can't achieve time current discrimination because they both overlap. What you can do is either push the green device forward to reduce its carrying capacity, or you can try to push the upstream device, the red device, backward, increasing its current capacity. Obviously, it's possible. Or you can actually do both. I'm going to try to adjust the green device first, the 630 amp MCCB. Select this edit keypad, move that slightly. And now look what's going to happen. So now at the moment, the long time current set to 630. I'll start changing it. Now I'm achieving selectivity. Not exactly. There's a chance this could trip, right? So what we need to do, select the red device and I'm going to adjust the short time current. By doing so, I can now go back to my 630 amp because now I reduced the capacity to 450 amps, which maybe it's not what I want. I can now increase that to 500. Okay, let's go back to the red device, try to do a bit more adjustments there. Let's increase the delay. Obviously, you need to make sure the cable, which is protected by the device, is big enough. Let's say it is. So now I've set the device to 1000 amps. Okay. And now I can go back to my green 630. And I'll try to go maximum 630. Yeah. That should do it. So the time current discrimination should be good now. Hold on. Okay. Now. Now it should be good. Now, providing my cable sizes are correct for the settings I've just made. It should be all good. I calculate the cable first. All right, cable selection Y at five is less than the calculated required current 500. Okay, that's because of the changes I just made. So I go back where I was so I can see both devices. Go protection, view graph, increase its size, select the tools. Let's see. Okay, that problem's gone away. Now try selectivity. The disconnection time of the upstream of the current connection. Ah, I'm being idiot. 
Right, so they have the problem with this device here. Let's see first if we've got in camera. So it's not protected. Okay, good. That's protected. And I've got protection here. What I'm going to do, I'm selecting this cable. I go protection, view graph. Okay, and now what I'm seeing. So that's my origin, red, green is my LV1 cable. And as you can see, I haven't got discrimination here. That was my problem. Okay, I'm going to adjust the device 160 ohms. Okay, that should do the trick. Calculate, selectivity study, happy days, no problems. Okay, so yeah, sometimes it's not so obvious where the problem is or you don't read the information properly on the screen. But so just to recap what the problem was. First, we've done the calculations and we had errors with protection being added to in camera where it shouldn't be. Then we had one of the cables here, which was undersized, 35 mil instead of 50. Then when we done a selectivity study, we had issue with discrimination between this cable and that cable. After we managed to fix the selectivity between them two, I then had a problem with the selectivity between this cable and the origin. Once all of it was set, that's it, no problems. Now you can print your reports and submit your cable sizes for approval, including with the setting of the protective devices. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day. Bye.